Hello, welcome back to Cody LUC Crocs. This video is going to be all about our new appointment of our manager, Javi Gracia. The temptation to call him Javi Gracia is very, very tempting, but it is Gracia. Um, and my autocorrect is going absolutely mental. As soon as I put Gracia in, it generally puts Gracia, which is a bit annoying, but it is what it is. So, um, our new manager, Gracia, has managed Valencia, Malaga, Ruben Kazan and Watford, to name a few. He is a 52-year-old and he is from Spain. He is described as a family man who absolutely has a passion for football and football will always come first um, in his life. Someone who's really softly spoken and is calm under pressure, but he can raise his voice if he really has to. So he's a manager who very, very much has his hands around the shoulders, like is very supportive, but if he really has to, he can do the, the blow dry treatment if, if needed. Um, obviously, this appointment comes off the back of sacking Jesse Marsh. We've had Jesse Marsh and Marcelo Bielsa and as our last two managers I know there's a lot of Bielsa's signings that are there such as Ailing, Cooper, um, Harrison, Bamford and then obviously there's Marsh's signings of uh, McKenney, Adams, um, Christiansen to name a few. Um, so Garcia will be able to select based on merit only he's not going to have any favorites in the sense of they i brought them in they're my favorites so there's not going to be anything like that like what marsh has so yep yeah, i think overall it's a good fresh start for leeds and hopefully the players will get on board with him and that's the most important thing it's about having a very united dressing room at this point um he typically has done a year at each club and then moves on um, and we have appointed him with a flexible contract which I assume has some kind of obligation for him to extend um, if he keeps us up so he'll get some compensation if like, we, we sack him or we get rid of him um, which I do think that's what the board of really wanted to do essentially just have a short term contract for for someone this season but very much a panic appointment but i think he's better than what we've got in place currently and that is no disrespect to michael scabala who's done an absolute fantastic job with the resources that he's got um gracia will also be bringing his uh coaching team with him which I think is what we've needed. Uh, we've needed a proper, well-established coaching team to help us um, really push in the last 15 games. So he's most known for his time at Watford in which he averaged about 1.32 points a game, um, which should mean we'd get another 19.8 points um in the last 15 games which would take us nicely up to 39 points which in most premier league seasons that is enough to survive the drop so if you can average 1.32 points per remaining game i'd be very very happy at that um but obviously the more points the better uh javi gracia he likes to play in all sorts of formations. He's played in the 3-4-2-1, the 4-4-2 traditional, the 3-5-2 and uh, most noticeably at Watford. He did the 4-4-2 but did it a bit more um, like double sixes. So like he did it where it was a 4 2, two, two. Um, So yeah he he really adapts his formation to the players that he's got rather than adapting players to a formation that he prefers and obviously i think that's that shows some good quality um that he's got that he will make the best of what he's got and hopefully that'll stand us in good stead because i'm excited to see his play potentially with a bit more width um which hopefully it's something that I'll be able to do with the players that we've got. 
so I'm going to just speak about his time mainly at Watford because it's the most applicable to us. Obviously, Watford were in the Premier League when he took over them. Um, so I'm going to just do a little bit about how he did there and then um, a little bit of views on Watford fans and a couple of Leeds fans' views on what they think of the new manager. So he took over Watford um, on the 21st of January uh, 2018 after they lost 2-0 to Leicester. They were still in 10th on 26 points after 24 games. So a bit interesting to see why um, the Watford owners at that time sacked, sacked their previous manager. Um, and I think it shows a little bit about them. They're, they're very much like Massimo and Cellino. They're very crazy, um, the Watford owners. And they've, they've got a reputation for just sacking managers left, right and centre. Um, but it gave... Uh, Gracia a chance to come in and um, in the 14 games that he managed and they had left of the season he managed to get 15 points which left them 14th overall in his first season which if he gets 15 points in 14 games if we if we we've got um we've got 15 games so it's a bit a bit scary but um, hopefully he'll, he'll be able to use um, our squad a little bit more wisely. Um, and then in his first full season at Watford, he took them to the final of the FA Cup. Uh, they lost that uh, final to Man City. They lost 6-0. Absolute battering, but getting battered by City can happen to us all. It happened to us um, on the 14th of December. Um, obviously back at their place, 7-0, so it does happen to us all. Um, their route to the FA Cup final, they beat Wolves, Palace, QPR, Newcastle and Woking on the way. Um, and they also managed to finish 11th on 50 points that, that season with a n minus 7 goal difference, scoring 52 goals and conceding 59 so overall they didn't do too bad um which which is good and then the season after so the uh 2018-19 season he got sacked just after four games um he drew his one and lost three of his first four games and like i said it doesn't take lots for this watford uh, owner to sack a manager it seems so, yeah, that's a bit of a journey of Javi Gracier of how he was at Watford. So, some positives to really take away from there. And it's something that we should hopefully take a little bit of light from. And I think that the Watford fans that I've managed to like have a little speak to and get their views on, on Gracier, they've, they've all said posit really, really positive comments about him to be honest so Watford FC 9 on Twitter said that they should have never sacked Gracia when they did and they've played some of the best football that we've seen in years at um at, at Watford so um yeah I think that so shows a lot about what some what, what that Watford fan in particular uh, it feels about him but I liked this part of what Watford FC 9 said on Twitter he said he will galvanize players get fans on side as well which is really really nice because that's exactly what we're needing at the moment we need him to get the fans together and getting all the players united and on the same wavelength and on the same path and hopefully that's one thing that he'll be able to do is get us all on the same direction on the same peripheral and hopefully really really just get together for the rest of the season um he also said which was quite interesting that nonto is apparently going to let his he's going to apparently let his chains off now so i think basically what this watford fan watford fc9 is saying is that he believes that Javi Gracia is going to really bring the best out of Nanta, which 
I, I'm all for that if that happens. I'm all for it. I'm not going to complain. So hopefully that happens. And yeah, I'm very, very excited if if you can get some more magic from Nanto. Uh, Watford Focus also said that his heart is warmed as Leeds fans are putting pictures up of Gracia, which is really nice. That shows that he very much misses him. Maybe they have the same love affair with Gracia as we do with Bielsa a little bit. Do you know what I mean? Maybe that's the whole love affair that they've got with, with Gracia. And if that's the case, it's not a bad thing for us at all. So that was quite nice to see. And Hornets Nest WFC said that he is pleased that... Um, Gracia gets another shot at the Premier League and that Leeds fans will not hear a bad word about him. But this is a bit that I really, really, really liked and that is that Gracia embraces the club and community. And that's what we've missed. We've missed we've missed a manager who really like embraces the community. Like I've already seen fans get pictures with Gracia and they've already like seemed to really like him, which is, is really nice to be honest. Um so all in all, like I'm I'm warming to him and I know that he was very much a underwhelming appointment for for a lot of Leeds fans, but I think people are slowly warming to him. And obviously, all it'll take for him is to get a couple of, a decent run together and a couple of wins or, or even a win and a couple of draws together. And us fans will be, will be, have that hope that he, he's actually going to take us places, which is, is what we want. Um, talking about Leeds fans and what we think of Gracia, Daniel C. Holmes 7 on Twitter said that he looks promising with a 41% win rate over 500 games, which is, is impressive these days. Like, I know there's a lot of perception of 41% is a rubbish record in terms of a win percentage record. It's really not anymore. 41% is actually really good, especially over that many games. And I know some of those were in like Saudi and... Um, league and stuff like that but you've got to you've got to remember that he did get 1.32 average points per game at Watford and that's pretty impressive in the Premier League too like that's not that bad and you know 1.32 get points per game in uh, at Watford would keep any team up across a 38 game season comfortably to be honest and that's, that's the other thing that you've got to think about because they always say, roughly, you need to get a point a game to stay up quite comfortably at in the Premier League. Four is the magic number, but 38, n near enough does it every single season. I think there's been like two two exceptions where that's, that's not happened. So, yeah, I think that's something really good. And Drew Coldstream said that he was hard not to love and I think that's the thing hopefully he will come across as someone that all the fans can just adore and I think that's what we need we need to become united as a fan base I think there was a lot of heartache about Bielsa and Jesse Marsh and whether Jesse Marsh was right replacement for Bielsa and Jesse Marsh is this Bielsa is that and it's now time to look forward we can look back all we want at Bielsa and we've got very fond memories of Bielsa and he's done stuff for this club that we'll never see ever again in terms of the community, in terms of uniting a city and obviously ending 16 years of really bad hurt but we need to look forward as a club and that's not going to be with Bielsa, it's not going to be with Marsh and I think Carlos Coburn for now has blown any chances of ever returning to Leeds because of he got offered the job and he rejected it by by media reports by the looks of it so I don't think he's going to be around so it's really time to move on and go to the future get really behind uh, Gracia and hope for the best there's a glimmer of hope there where 
in the fifth round of the FA Cup as well. So, you know, we've got that to contend with as well as, you know, staying up in the league. And, you know, hopefully we can progress still in the FA Cup and stay up. Like, that would be really ideal. Um, so, yeah, I think, you know, get United, get behind him and... Let's just hope for the best. And if there's any hostility, don't aim it at Gracia. Aim it elsewhere. Let's say. But we're Leeds. We're never going to do it the easy way. It's always going to be the hard way. But we'll always march on together. And we'll always, you know, support this team until it probably kills us. But, yeah. But thank you all for tuning in on this special i will be back on um friday i had to think what day i was on then um for the southampton pre-match which will be interesting because hopefully Cressia will be um our manager subject to work permits so see you on friday and i hope you all enjoy the rest of your week